All right, we're here at UNBC and we're about to go in and we're gonna see some art. And then later on today, we're gonna see a concert. Oh. Well, that'll be fun. And, uh, let's get going. My name is Lee Boot. I'm a media artist and a researcher, and uh, I'm the associate director of our Imaging Research Center, which is an interesting place here at UMBC. If you come back or you're looking at colleges, um, please come back to campus and come over to the IRC. But I'm talking to you here today as, uh, as just an individual artist. Um, this is a faculty show. We have a faculty show every couple of years. Uh, and this is some work that I have been working on. Um, I'm actually not quite finished with it yet, so in a way it's a work in progress. I've been working on since uh, 2012. This project, um, it kind of looks like just regular kind of crazy modern abstract painting in a way, but, but there's something kind of different about it, and I'm excited to talk to you about this a little bit today. Um, it's an experiment. I'm an experimental media artist, so I don't know, if, uh, you know where this is going to go or how it's going to work. Um, but here's the idea. Um, you know, for artists have done different things in societies since the beginning of time. And what artists do in societies changed a lot about 150 years ago. But realize that um, before the modern era, artists were usually working for dominant power, working for kings and, and whatnot, and, and helping create the culture, or popes, helping create the culture of their civilization. Modern art was a different idea. Modern art was the artist is going to create their own individual voice, it's going to go in a beautiful gallery somewhere, and we're going to see it, it's going to be an object of beauty. Uh, we don't really have to know what it means per se, it's, it's an aesthetic experience in its own right. But right now we're kind of thinking about changing it up again. I'm not the only artist thinking this, but I'm one. Um, and so if you see, that you're actually looking at the end of a five minute video right now, those phrases that you just saw. Um, this, is a, a, this is a painting process that helped me figure out a kind of formula um, that I think could be useful for uh, politicians and for policymakers and people um, in charge of places like my city of, of Baltimore. So this is an experiment where an artist, instead of just making um, a beautiful thing to put on the wall, even though I have done that as part of this, what I'm really doing is I'm problem solving. So I'm doing the same thing that you guys do when you're doing those diagrams in your notebook and you're trying to figure out how you're going to write your paper. I started this process by just brainstorming, the same as you do, uh, except it's a four by seven painted surface made up of one foot squares. I have some of them up here. And I'm painting the things that I'm thinking about, random, really. And I'm scanning the black marks I put on there, and I'm bringing them in the computer, and I'm sliding photographs in behind those marks, printing it out again at the same size I scanned it, and pasting it over the top of what I was painting, right where it originally was. And I'm starting to see how different, different, different uh, problems that we face, challenges that we have in the city, um, connect to one another. And I'm, I'm, here I'm starting to experiment with what if these connections were, were like roots uh, of a tree? Um, and what if those roots were actually deeply embedded themes, stories like freedom and liberty that we think our country uh, runs on? And what if those stories were actually causing all the individual challenges in transportation, education, crime, and so on that we have? Because those stories create culture. So that crystal-y thing that was just in the middle a second ago, think of that as culture. Now that's a really odd thing. But what I'm saying here is, what if our stories, think of these roots as stories, are, create culture, and culture 
actually affects the social systems that we have. See these pipes? Think of those as transportation systems. Think of them as utility systems. So what I'm, what I'm learning over a three-year process of painting on, on these four by seven surfaces made up of one foot squares and photographing and printing them out and so on, what I'm, what I'm meditating on, it's really a meditation, what I'm learning is that, or what I'm asking is, you know, what if, what if the social systems, what if the way you're educated is actually an artifact, a product of our culture? What would that mean? What would that mean? I mean, we think that we're going to fix education or crime or transportation, and so, so here you see this. What if our stories create frames for how we perceive things, and, and those stories shape our culture, and the culture structures, brackets, limits our imagination, and enables our imagination? And what if that culture also determines and designs our social systems, and consequently the world that we live in, because we live in a bunch of social structures and social systems. That's what this room is, that's what this university is. working um, in New York uh, when World War II started and um, he decided to join um, the army and work as a photographer, as a photojournalist um, in the war. Basically this is I think a group of um, photographers and cameramen that Walter worked with and on the far right is Walter and um, something that was significant about Walter is that um, in almost every photo of him, like he was known for not wearing his helmet because he said that it, it interrupted, basically it interfered with him being able to see to take his photos. one minute long. If you don't like it, just hang on. It's only a minute long. And it'll be done with we'll another one. Um, and then this time, I asked them to study the flute and extended technique. So what you're going to hear is not a lot of traditional flute playing, but what they want, what, what spoke to them sonically when they came into the gallery and they looked at a piece of work that inspired them. And so the first piece is by Dylan Howe, who is behind you right there. And he was inspired by this beautiful work by Lee Still, entitled Challenge Still. I'm um, Lee Boot, entitled Challenge Still. And so we thought it'd be fun for you guys if we played it in front of the piece that inspired it.
Thank you.